Brady, working as a consultant at Art Park. Today we are glad to have with us Dr. Suma Biswas, who is an associate professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering. So, Dr. Suma, I would like to tell us something more about that. Hi, thanks for inviting me here. Um, I'm Shoma Biswas. I uh, did my PhD from uh, University of Maryland College Park. And after that, I worked as a research faculty at University of Notre Dame, uh, close to Chicago. And then I moved back to India. I worked for some time at G Research Bangalore and then I joined ISC. So on the occasion of International Women's Day, I would like to ask you some questions. So I'll just get started on that. Sure. Uh, so what does freedom mean to you? So freedom actually can mean different things to different people at different points in their life. Uh, so because we are researchers here, so I'll talk about what freedom means in this context. Um, so uh, first of all, I think for us, freedom really means to uh, pursue work in the areas of our choice. So it can be, uh, say, short term goals, which will give us results right away. It can be very, very long term also. And also some things that maybe other people don't believe in you, but you are still free to work in those areas. Um, maybe sometimes you feel that if um, you succeed, then it will have a big impact in say everyday life of other people or maybe in your country or society. Uh, so, and it's okay to fail. I think that is what freedom really means to me. Uh, freedom uh, also has different other meanings, at least to me, for example, I'm not constrained in when I'm working. So ours is not a like regular job in which we are only working when we are in the department or in the office, right? So for me, um, I think I get the best ideas when I'm really walking around in the campus. So that is what also freedom is, right? Uh, that is what you are working on when you are working. And I think for researchers, um, Freedom also means that you are able to free your mind because we continuously uh, keep on reading uh, what other people are doing in your field. Right? Uh, that's very important for you to stay up to date. But then uh, that can have very different impacts uh, in your mind. For example, uh, you can get very uh, scared or frightened also that people are doing or working on so many things. However, you are going to make any impact in that area. Sometimes it can be the other way around that uh, you can also feel that, okay, uh, there are so many like big people who are working on so many nice things, right? And so your mind can uh, get constrained by those ideas and it's sometimes it's very difficult to think beyond those, mm -hmm. right? So to be really a successful researcher, you have to break away. Your mind needs to be free, right? Irrespective of other people, what they are doing, you need to understand that, but keep your mind free so that you can actually think wildly and come up with really nice ideas and pursue your work. That's really a nice advice, ma'am. And also, yeah, as you told that freedom is like to express ourselves freely and uh, keep our mind uh, open to ideas. and All right. So, I mean, education is very closely related to freedom, like education gives you the freedom to express and express your thoughts openly. So what motivated you to pursue your education or a life in science? Uh, uh, so I really liked maths and science when I was small, uh, right, in school, especially those like science experiments that you do in which you can check whether the things that are written in your book, they are right or wrong. But having said that, truthfully, I never really planned my career as it turned out to be. Um, so for me, I tried to focus and do well on whatever I was doing at that point. So when I was doing my undergrad, I tried to do well in that. When I was doing my master's, I just tried to concentrate without really thinking too much beyond because many times things are beyond our control. Right. So uh, but um, when I was doing my master's project, that was the first time I really understood what research is because we were working, we were given a problem, but after that we were free to explore. We were free to try out things and uh, at least our advisor told us that it's okay if things don't work out. You can just report whatever you have tried and that's okay. Right? So this whole process, because most of the things that we tried did not work because that was the first time we were trying anything. right? But then every time we failed, uh, really we understood what can be done next. And finally, when things did work out a little, we were like so excited. So I think this whole journey of uh, 
uh, trying something, failing, and no one is really like scolding you or scaring you that you are doing something wrong. And then you finally get to do something which really works. I think uh, when I did that, I really liked that journey. And then I decided to pursue my PhD and stay. <laughs> that's that's really nice. Uh, so coming to the next part, like um, yeah, education is everyone's right, but we also have this concept of gender bias. Which is uh, there everywhere, like in education work, or it, it's always prevalent. So, mm -hmm. have you ever faced this, or how have you tackled it? Like, if you're faced. Um, so, I have heard from many people firsthand that they have faced a lot of gender bias. Luckily for me, neither in my family nor in my, say, school life, college life, I've really faced something so serious which I really thought that this is a like big gender bias so I must have been like very lucky um, in fact in our undergrad masters and um, wherever there were so few girls we were actually giving like given privileged treatment so whether that is good or bad I don't know but uh, I never really faced anything very serious but I feel that if I had faced anything of that sort, the way I would, different people will handle it in different way, right? But the way I would handle it probably is to focus more on my strengths, my abilities, and to really work even harder and show that I can do it so that the people on the other side can actually see and understand that the way they are thinking is probably not right. Because it's always good to show and prove rather than just say it. Right? So that's the way probably I would have handled it if I'd really faced something. Yeah, actions speak louder than words. So. Yeah, yeah. And also coming to the next part, like uh, nowadays everyone is so focused on their work that they forget about important things like health, family and etc. So right. How do you think, like how can a woman handle the career life balance? <laughs> uh, this is a very, very important question. And I think every woman uh, has to answer this to themselves. And... Uh, uh, so again, everyone will handle it in their own way. So I can tell you the things that I personally try to do and I think that really helped me in my life. So the first thing is if you, um, if you have a very supportive and understanding life partner or spouse, that is extremely uh, useful because uh, then they can not only help you in your like day to day household uh, duties but I think more important uh, it's a big mental support that you know that you have someone who really understands your work your work pressure and uh, accordingly like takes care of the other duties that you are supposed to kind of handle mm -hmm. but that is something that uh, most of the time we cannot choose right mm -hmm. so uh, and that's many times beyond our control so I think uh, the other things which are probably in our control is one is to prioritize your uh, what you want to at that point. And it can change. It can change even during a day, right? One day. So, for example, if tomorrow I have a deadline or I have some urgent work that I have to submit, then I'll maybe 100% focus on my work, right? And maybe let uh, whatever is happening in my house take its own course and not worry about it but on the other uh, time I can make up for it right I can actually spend quality time with my family but I think um, a couple of things are very important is to kind of separate these two because most women and even me uh, like some time before I would say Many uh, women, they feel, always have this guilty feeling, right? When you are working, you feel that I'm not spending time with my family. And when you are actually spending time with your family, you are like going over your emails and checking how many work is left for you to do. Mm -hmm. I think that doesn't really help anything, mm -hmm. right? So it's better that when you're working, you really focus on your work. And because you anyways can't be doing multiple things at the same time. And when you are with your family, just spend your 100% concentrate on that. Right. And uh, I think all of us, we um, have our own struggles and we have reached here after a lot of struggles. Mm. So it's absolutely OK to not feel guilty about what you are doing, your work as well as. And it's also OK to not be perfect all the time. Right. We can't. Right. It's all, uh, 24 hours. Right. So we can't do everything perfectly. Mm. Uh, but it's important to prioritize depending upon the situation and to give your 100 percent for that. Mm.
Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Bye.